welcome to Kids Your Truth at Home Week 5. And now for the challenge of the week. Hi friends. I hope you're all doing well. I certainly miss seeing each of you um, every week. Mr. Sean and I wanted to encourage you though to keep saying your sections. Several of you have done an awesome job keeping up and we just wanted to encourage you that you can still earn patches. You can still earn those rewards and prayerfully we'll be able to get together soon and we'll be, we'll be able to iron on your patches and maybe some of your standards will look like this, very full without another little space for another patch. Speaking of patches, that kind of takes us to our challenge for this week. If you had the opportunity to design your own patch, what would it look like? That's gonna be your challenge. We want you to design your own brand new Kids for Truth patch. But we don't want you to just design it. We also want you to tell us what a Kids for Truth student would have to do in order to earn that patch. So those are your two uh, challenges for this week. I don't care what you use. You wanna use Play-Doh, paints, cardstock, whatever you can dream up of. Even if you use sticks, I don't care. Find something creative and create your own Kids for Truth patch. Then have your mom or dad take a picture of it and send it to Mr. Sean. And we'll feature it on next week's Kids for Truth Stay at Home video. Now, um, you also need to make sure that you include what the student, what the Kids for Truth student would have to do in order to earn your new patch. Have you ever thought about why we give patches as rewards in Kids for Truth? I mean, where did the idea of rewarding come from? And what does the Bible have to say about rewards for serving God? You know, the Bible actually has a lot to say about rewards for serving God. And it's actually really important that we know what the Bible says because we can be earning those rewards right now. We actually can't earn rewards when we're in heaven. Heaven is for enjoying rewards, not earning them. We're going to go to Mr. Sean now and he's going to tell us a little bit more. See you guys later. Hey everybody. Welcome to Kids for Truth, Truth Time. Hey, today we're talking about rewards. So you guys know you earn rewards in Kids for Truth for saying sections, for bringing your Bible, doing your homework. You earn patches, you earn uh, Kids for Truth books, all kinds of stuff. So today we're talking about rewards and I hope you guys take a chance, or take a chance, take time to make, uh, do the project that Miss Sabrina told you about and make a patch for Kids for Truth. If you do, send it to me and I'll feature it in a future episode of Kids for Truth at home. So, hope everybody's doing well and you're enjoying this spring weather. I know I am. I'm loving it. It's terrific. But today, we're going to talk more about rewards. Remember last week, we talked about the rapture. Do you remember what the rapture is? I know Evelyn told us last week. It's when Jesus returns to earth to take all believers, living and dead, back with him to heaven to live forever. So you guys remember that. That's what we talked about last week. And we talked about how that should motivate us, motivate us to be working for Jesus Christ with the time that we have here because we don't know when that rapture is gonna take place. Well, the fact that Jesus could return at any time should be a good motivation for us to be working. But we're gonna talk about another one today and that has to do with rewards. So turn back to Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. This is the verse we left off with last week. So Revelation 22 and verse 12 says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. So what did Jesus say he was going to bring with him when he comes back? The rewards, right? We already answered this one last week. Rewards, absolutely. So. The rapture kind of kicks this whole thing off, but then after the rapture in heaven, another event takes place. After the rapture, we will be with him. Believers will be with him in heaven, and we'll be brought before Jesus' throne to give account for all of the good works that we've done for him and to, re to uh, receive our rewards. Now, 2 Corinthians 5.10, you can go ahead and turn there. 2 Corinthians 5.10 uh, calls this time the judgment seat of Christ. So let's look at 2 Corinthians 
chapter 5 and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So one thing I want you to understand is at this judgment seat of Christ, there are only believers, only Christians. So the people there have already received eternal life. This judgment is not about whether or not a person goes to heaven. That they've already received eternal life. They're already with Jesus in heaven. And not only that, but it's not a time specifically reviewing uh, the sin in a believer's life. Not only has Jesus already paid for that, and the Bible tells us that there's no condemnation for those of us who believe in Jesus Christ. None of that matters anymore. Uh, it's not the main focus of the judgment. Now, the sin that we do and the selfishness that we, that we do each day will take away from our rewards because those, are, those aren't things that, that, that Christ is going to reward. So indirectly, sure, it has some bearing on this judgment, but specifically the focus of this judgment is to review the things that believers have done, good works that believers have done for Jesus Christ. So some of those works are going to be worthy of reward and some are going to be unworthy of reward. So what, what makes the difference? What do I have to do to get on this, in on this rewarding thing? Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 10.31. Now every one of you should have 1 Corinthians 10.31 memorized. This is a very common verse and I'm pretty sure it's in our memorization section. So 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. So what should motivate a believer to serve God? God's glory, absolutely. God's glory should be our motivation. So Christ doesn't reward works that a believer does for their own glory. And in fact, elsewhere in the Bible, we're told that if, if we do good works just to be seen of other men and to get praise from other people, the Bible's clear. You already have your reward for that. You got the praise. Those are not rewards that are, or those are not deeds, good deeds that are worthy of reward. Remember, it's also important to remember that God is the one that motivates us to do good works to begin with. So God gets all of the glory for anything that we do that is good anyway. It's all due to God. He deserves all the glory. So first thing that we can learn is that getting thanks and praise should not be our motivation for serving God. God's glory should be our motivation. But also, works that a believer does in our own strength are also not worthy. They're not eligible for reward. Turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 will be in verse 10 and we'll also look at 11. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. So what does the strength, where does the strength to do good works come from according to these verses? Well, it comes from God's glorious power. God's glorious power is where we get our strength to do good works. You know, doing good works in our own strength is really very closely related to doing good works to get uh, praise for ourselves, to get our own glory. When we do things in our own strength, oftentimes that's what we're looking for. We're looking to show other people how good we are or how godly we are. Well, those are things that are done in our strength and they're motivated out of uh, self-glory. I want glory for myself, not out of glorifying God and not done in God's strength. So those, those works, even though they may be good deeds, they're not worthy of reward from Jesus Christ. So let's look at Philippians 4.13, another very, uh, very good verse to have memorized. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now this was written by the Apostle Paul. So on whom did the Apostle Paul rely for strength in his service? 
They relied on Christ's strength, right? Christ's strength. Now the Apostle Paul, he traveled just hundreds of thousands of miles, well not hundreds of thousands, he traveled, traveled hundreds of miles, he traveled thousands of miles preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, preaching the good news. And he endured a lot of things. Uh, the Bible tells us about beatings, about stonings, about uh, shipwreck, all kinds of imprisonments, all kinds of things that, that the Apostle Paul had to suffer. And he did it while doing good works. But in the end, the Apostle Paul gave God the glory for the stamina or for the strength to be able to endure those things. I think that if the, Paul would, if the Apostle Paul would have relied on his own strength, I think it's likely he would have given up probably long before all of the bad things happened. I know I would have. I would have given up if I would have relied on my own strength. So let's look at Philippians now, or we're in Philippians. Let's turn back two chapters, uh, chapter 2 and verse 19 through 21. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. So why would Timothy be willing to take on a long trip to Philippi? A long, hard trip, in fact. He would have done it for Christ. He sought the things that were Jesus Christ, there in verse 21. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Paul is talking about Timothy and saying he's not like that. He seeks things that are of Jesus Christ, and that was his motivation. You know where Timothy learned that? He learned that from the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, he learned that ministry is about glorifying God. It's about relying on God for strength to serve Him. So last thing I want to cover before we close today is more about those rewards. Like, what are they specifically? Well, in the Bible, these rewards are called crowns. And in Bible times, an athlete, when they would win a race or an event, they were awarded a crown. Now, this crown was a, a laurel wreath crown. So it was, made out of, it was made out of branches and stuff, just like this behind me. It's made out of branches, maybe, maybe a wild olive tree. It could be any number of types of plants woven together, and it was made a crown to honor the athlete that won the event. Now, whether or not the rewards in heaven, the crowns in heaven, are, are, are going to be laurel wreaths, or if they're going to be more like kingly crowns that we would think of, made of gold and silver. I'm not sure that the Bible is, is, is really clear, but one thing I do know is that as believers, we're going to be very, very honored and grateful that we receive a reward for the things that we have done for Christ and in His strength. Last verse today is Revelation chapter 4. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. <clears throat> so these 24 elders are believers that are going to be taken to heaven uh, during the rapture along with the rest of us believers. So we're going to be there in, that, in the midst of them as believers. And what we are going to do with our crowns, our rewards, is we're going to take them and we're going to throw them at the feet of Jesus because we're going to understand at that point in time that it's only because of Jesus that, that we were even able to do good works. And it's only because of him that we were motivated to do good works. And he's the only one that is going to receive glory at that time. So just like in Kids for Truth, we're clear with how you have to, uh, what you have to do to earn rewards. The, the sections you have to memorize and the work that you have to do to earn patches and Kids for Truth bucks. You know what? Praise the Lord. God has also shown us that not only should we be busy because uh, Christ could come back at any time, at any point in time. But also, we should be busy because, you know what, God sees our good works and He rewards those and praise the Lord for that. Next week, we're going to be looking at a different kind of judgment. 
the judgment of unbelievers. And I hope you come back next week and learn about this judgment as well. Important things we're learning about God's plan for the future. I'll see you guys next week. Love you guys.